It's Saturday. Got back from London on Wednesday. Two days of editing in Vegas. Drove into Los Angeles. That's where we are right now. Last night. Should be here for somewhere around a week or so, give or take. This weekend is the one year anniversary of Hollywood Park Casino's remodel. So in celebration of that event, they are throwing two tournaments this weekend, one today on Saturday, one tomorrow on Sunday. Both 50K guarantees, we're gonna play them both. We're gonna hop in both of those. They had seen the vlogs that we did previously from the Hollywood Park Casino, and they dug it. They totally uh, saw the vision of using these, these videos to help promote poker, help grow poker, show off Los Angeles poker, and uh, any casino that sort of gets the vision and embraces showing off poker to a wider audience. So, heading over there, uh, I think we're already a little bit late, so let's go. Here's the drill. Today is day one of the uh, festivities this weekend here at Hollywood Park Casino. Today is the first of two $340 tournaments, 50K guarantee each. Today's is a bounty event, which means each person that you knock out, you win $100 cash on the spot. Or maybe not cash on the spot, maybe you get a chip and then you turn that in at the end, but whatever. It's $100 you get $100. Basically that means you wanna play a little bit more loose, uh, especially versus players that you have covered because there's raw equity added to each situation where you're able to eliminate a player. There's that extra money available, that extra cash prize each time you're able to knock somebody out. Do I sound like a tournament professional, a tournament specialist? Probably not even close. All right, let's go inside. The tournament is probably about to start within 15 minutes or so. Getting underway here. It is a bounty tournament, $100 bounties, uh, 30,000 in chips to start. See what happens. Let's go. All right guys, so it's actually like the third or fourth break of the tournament right now. I haven't had any time to stop and run through hands. The breaks are only 10 minutes long and uh, there's been a lot of very nice people that have come up and uh, said hello to me during the break. A lot, of, uh, a lot of poker fans here in Los Angeles, obviously, and uh, a lot of people that watch the vlog. So that's been really cool to stop, chat with them for a little bit, and uh, that's taken up all the time in the breaks, which is, uh, it's been really fun. It's been a really fun way to spend the breaks, just chatting with people. We can try and uh, run through one, maybe two hands here real quick, but maybe probably only just one. So the first interesting hand of the tournament was in the 75-150 level. The under the gun player limped and I looked down at ace king of hearts. I'm in the hijack, I make it 450 to go. The cutoff in the small blind call and the big blind three bets to 1,000. I could definitely consider a four bet here, but I don't want to face a five bet. Uh, the sizing is really strange. It's very small sizing. Since my hand is suited, uh, I'm a little more happy to go multi-way because if I uh, can flush over flush somebody, that's a pretty good situation, obviously. But I just decided to make the flat call and two other players call behind me. So we go four ways to a flop with ace, deuce, deuce, two diamonds, and one heart. The big blind bets 2,200, I call, and then the player on my left puts in a raise. He makes it 6,700 to go. It folds back to me, and he's not really repping that much here. He's repping a deuce and possibly an overplayed ace, but that's really about it. Seems like he should have a flush out here most of the time. But he could have any deuce. This is Los Angeles after all. So I just go ahead and make the call. Turn is not a very good card for us. Turn is a four of diamonds. I check it over too many bets again. This time for 7,000. 
Now we can't beat anything other than just an overplayed ace. Of course, anything is possible, but uh, I got to uh, chat with this player before the tournament started a little bit. Seems like he kind of knows what, what he's doing, and that's just my read. It doesn't seem like he would go too far, uh, get too far out of line here, overvalue an ace that much. So since I beat hardly anything other than uh, just a, a very overplayed ace, I make the fold. He doesn't show he doesn't show the hand at the time, but uh, later on when we were chatting, he told me that he had six, seven of diamonds. Did turn the flush? Makes sense. I don't have any diamonds in my hands. Don't block any flushes. Block the good. I block the ace, and uh, obviously lose to a deuce as well. So lose that hand. We can try and run through one more hand here real quick in the 100, 200 level. The low jack limps. The button races 700. <laughs> I looked down at ace 10 offsuit in the big blind. I decided to put in a three bet here with an ace blocker. Don't really want to call with an ace out of position. And uh, seeing as there's a limper and the raise came from the button, he, it seems like his range could be fairly wide here. So I put in a raise and I make it four times the original raise, 2,800 to go. Limper folds and the button makes the call. It turns pretty good for us, 10, 5, 5 of two hearts. I bet 2,300, the button makes the call. Turn is the king of hearts. So the front door flush draw comes in, but we do have the ace of hearts. I decided to check and the button bets 3,500. Pretty straightforward call here, I think. River's an offsuit king. I check it over to him again and this time he checks back. So feeling pretty good about my hand. I roll it over and turns out it is good. He made a comment about uh, it being too early to shove uh, on the river there. Too early in the tournament to shove all in. Not sure what I would have done there. Pretty, pretty tricky spot. I might have called him anyway though, knowing me. All right, gotta run. Breaks are really short here. More hands to come. Good news, guys. Made it to the money. I cashed a poker tournament, a multi table tournament. It's amazing. It's a good feeling. Feels good to cash a tournament. Still grinding, still grinding over here. 28 to go. All right guys, long story short, and uh, I'll spare you the drama, Busto, Busto from the tournament. But as mentioned, cashed, made a little bit of money. That much to be exact. So, a couple hands to go over from the tournament of poker. All right, I switched over to the uh, iPhone microphone, if need be. But let's just run through uh, the few interesting hands that I have here before we wrap up the day. Call it a night. I'm pretty tired. Drove in from L.A. last night. Got average sleep last night. Went for a run before going to bed. Anyway, let's get to the hands here. So, we're playing 400, 800, 100. Early position raised to 2,000. Cutoff calls, I look down at King Jack of Diamonds on the button, I make the call and the blinds call as well. So a five way flop, <coughs> 10 eight, four with two diamonds. That's a flush draw plus two over cards. There's two checks and the initial raiser puts out a bet of 6,000. The player on my right makes the call. So it's just a question of calling or jamming all in. I have about 21,000 at this point in my stack. So with all that money in there, I feel like a jam is appropriate. King high flush draw on two over cards. Always gonna have good equity here no matter what. That's what I do, I ship it in for 21K. The two uh, blinds fold and the initial raiser makes the call. Player on my right also calls. Looking for some help here. Doesn't come on the turn, offsuit four. The initial raiser jams all in and he pushes the player on my right out. So we're heads up heading to a river. We're up against 10-9 offsuit. So we do have the two over cards to go along with the flush draw. Heading into the river, heads up. River is fat ace of diamonds. So we make the nut flush on the river there. 10-9 offsuit, no good. So we ship that one and we triple up in that spot, more than triple up. Get up to somewhere around 75 or 80,000 after that pot is over. We skip ahead to the 1200, 2400 level with a 400 ante. I open up king queen of clubs, make it 6K. The button makes the call, everyone else folds. So heads up to a flop, rather favorable flop this time. Ace four, deuce, all clubs. Just the nuts this time. I decide to check it, I decide to lay the trap. Unfortunately, the button does not go for it, he checks it back. Turn is an offsuit five, so it puts four to a straight on board. This time I put a uh, very small bet out to try and, uh, try and induce him a little bit. I bet 4,000, very good news. 
just rips it in there. It's somewhere in the neighborhood of 40K, just a little bit over 40K. You know the drill, make the call. I show my hand and he just mucks his hand. He fires it into the muck. It's, uh, it's unretrievable, so we don't, we don't even know uh, what he has, but obviously drawing dead if he just shifted it into the muck. So river is meaningless. We double up there once again, more than double up. Uh, we get a stack of just about 100K. We get into 100K territory, triple digits. A couple good things going our way. Next hand to report isn't really that interesting, but it is a fun one. There's an early middle position player who jams all in. He's pretty short, somewhere in the neighborhood of maybe seven big blinds or so. I barely have him covered with about a nine big blind stack. I had dwindled down considerably, uh, just not making any hands, not, not finding any premiums. And there's not a lot of folding going on in this tournament. So there's not really that much that can be done other than wait for some good spots. The good spots were not coming, so dwindled well down to under 10 big blinds. The only player at the table that I have covered ships all in, and I looked down at King Queen of Hearts. With the nine big blind stack and a bounty tournament, it's all going in there, so I go ahead and reshove, and everyone else folds. We're up against an ace. We have two live cards, and the board runs out pretty favorable for us. We end up making the best hand, we knock a player out, and we get ourselves one bounty in the tournament, knocking out the only player at the table that I cover at the time. So things things went well for a while. Uh, got up to somewhere around 180K in chips. And then same old, same old. Just dwindled, dwindled all the way down. The blind levels in this tournament are 25 minutes long. Never made any premium hands. Never found any big pairs in this tournament. I never once had aces, kings, queens, jacks, or tens. I had nines once. I had ace, king maybe twice. Ace queen a couple times. Never had any. Uh, never had any sets. Made a couple hands along the way. Uh, you don't make it into the money without making some hands, like that king high, like that flop nut flush, for example. But not that many premium hands to speak of. Get short stack once again. I have uh, somewhere in the neighborhood of eight big blinds, I think. Look down at a six of diamonds. We're playing seven handed, and I am under the gun or under the gun plus one. I can't I can't quite remember, but a six diamonds with eight big blinds playing seven handed. It's a profitable shove. I looked it up. I don't just know these things. I looked it up, and uh, I ship it in there. I believe the cutoff uh, makes the call. Everyone else folds. We're up against pocket jacks. Long story short, tournament is over. Can't improve. Busto. So we cash in the tournament for $515. We pick up one bounty worth $100. So that's $615 according to my math. All right, just winding it down here with, uh, with a beer in, I should know the name of this lounge, this bar here, but I do not at the moment. If I figure it out, I'll put it down below right here. So yeah, the beer list is actually like pretty impressive in, uh, in this casino bar. Lots of taps, lots of uh, draft beers available. So we cash the tournament, we get the bounty, we profit on the day a little bit, and uh, we get to come back and do it all over again tomorrow. So I'm not gonna go out and uh, enjoy the town uh, too much tonight or at all. I'm actually pretty tired, like I said. So just gonna wind down with this beer here, call it a day, come back tomorrow, do it all over again. We'll see if we can go two for two. It's really fun to just be here and, uh, and doing this and sharing this room with you guys, showing off the room and playing cards. Back after it tomorrow. Sunday afternoon, well, almost noon. It's early. I've been on a pretty good sleep schedule. Uh, waking up around 7.30 in the morning. Last night I went to bed uh, shortly after the tournament ended. Just went straight to the hotel room, straight to bed. Feels good to be on a, uh, a proper normal sleep schedule. London set me on a good path here, a good path for a sleep schedule. I expect it to last another approximately 1.5 days. 
before we are back into the reverse, uh, sleeping in until 3 p.m. up until 8 a.m. But in the meantime, today is tournament number two. It's another 340 event, but no bounties this time. Straight up multi-table tournament, no prize for knocking any players out. Just trying to get as deep as possible. That sounded weird. It's a fun change of pace for sure from the uh, everyday cash game grind, playing in some of these tournaments, trying to learn a few things here along the way as we go. Let's get in there, see how it goes. Alright guys, actually second break right now, but I need to tell you guys real quickly about this uh, very monkey-ish hand that I, that I played. I think this was in the second level. Actually, maybe the third level. Something like that. Uh, the level is the 100-200 with a 25 ante. That's the level. So the under the gun player limps, the cutoff raises to 600, and it pulls to me in the big blind, I have king queen offsuit. For some reason I thought that the uh, the cutoff might make it a little bit bigger with the limper in there. I thought his, I thought his sizing uh, felt a little bit on the lighter side. Probably not good to make uh, these assumptions about a player that you haven't played that much with in the past. I haven't played it with this player at all other than the previous two levels. So it could be a little bit too uh, assumptive of me. Anyway, I take my read and I decide to put in a three bet. Uh, I make it 2,500 to go out of the big blind. Pulls back to the cutoff and makes the call. Flop is 10, 8, 7 with two diamonds. I decide to put in a C bet. Uh, I bet 2,700. I'm not sure I really like my C bet that much. There could be some good turn cards for us. I don't know if I even like a jack that much, but I guess a king or a queen turn card could be good. He thinks for a little while and then he makes the call. Turn is the ace of diamonds, which brings in the front door flush. I think it's probably a pretty good card for me to represent. Uh, the ace should be good for my range and bad for his range. So with that in mind, I decided to put in another bet. I bet 4,400 this time. He thinks for quite some time. And then once again, he makes the call. So not feeling too good about my hand at this point. River's a three of diamonds. So I have uh, what has to be very close to the absolute bottom of my range here. No pair, no flush, just absolute nothingness. I don't beat anything. So with this kind of a run out, I just can't help myself. Decide to go for the third barrel. Take the opportunity uh, on, the, on this card to put it in the third barrel. I bet 8,000. My opponent uh, doesn't look too pleased with the situation. He shakes his head and makes the fold. So I think we get away with one there. Uh, I'm not sure I really love my line considering we don't block anything other than maybe a big ace. Block ace king and ace queen. So it doesn't seem too too bad but uh, could be a little bit adventurous there. Anyway, uh, things going okay so far. I think I have a little bit north of 50,000 in chips. We started with 30,000 so I've chipped up a little bit in the early going. Just grinding it out. All right guys, pretty quick turn of events here. Uh, I'm now out of the tournament, all the way out from 50K in chips to zero. Things can happen, things can happen quickly in a poker tournament apparently. So let's run through two key hands here. First one, we're playing 400, 800, 100. I look down at ace king of spades from other gun plus two. I raise it up to 1800. The player on my direct left calls and the big line calls. So three ways to a flop. A77 with two hearts. It checks to me and I bet 3,000. The player on my left calls and the big line folds. So heads up to a turn card of an offsuit 10. This time I bet 8,500. And the player on my left raises to 20,000. On paper, I can definitely get away from this hand. But versus this exact player in this exact situation, I can never get away from this hand. He's only got about 10,000 behind uh, after this bet. And uh, just to try and explain myself a little bit more, just to try and uh, paint the picture a little bit better, uh, I saw this player raise the button and then call a jam for somewhere in the neighborhood of 45 big blinds with 7-3 of diamonds. Uh, so to say he's a little bit reckless of a player would be an understatement, I think. Of course, every situation is different, but I've seen some things. I've seen some things out here. So I just decided to go with it and uh, I jam it all in there. I don't want to just call and then uh, on a brick river have the actually go check check in case he has a flush draw I need to charge him the max and if he does jam the river i'm never folding anyway so i decided to stick it in and uh he calls with ace 10 and we cannot improve 
So that takes me down to about 22 big blinds. And again, on paper, I can certainly find uh, some instances where I can get away from that hand versus various players. This is not one of those uh, instances. The blinds went up shortly after that and whittled down a little bit, down to about 12 and a half big blinds. Looked down at pocket queens from under the gun plus one. Finally, look at a premium hand, a, uh, a big pair. Jam it all in there for 12 and a half big blinds. Get called in the cutoff position who rolls over ace eight of hearts. And uh, it's not gonna work out. It's not gonna work out in this run out. He's gonna win my last 12 and a half big blinds. And that's that. All right guys, so that's gonna do it for me from uh, Hollywood Park Casino here uh, this weekend. I'm pretty wiped out. Two tournaments, back-to-back -back days, uh, one of them going pretty deep. There's gonna be a lot more uh, Los Angeles poker to come this week, but gotta get rested up, I think. Just gonna chill, end the video here. Before I do that, I wanna uh, give, a guy, give a couple people uh, here at Hollywood Park to just talk a little bit about the casino. It's the one-year anniversary, so it seems appropriate to just uh, you know, give them a little bit of a uh, platform here to just talk about the property and the past year and things to come for this casino property. Definitely one of my favorites here in uh, in LA, easily. Just really gorgeous property. So I'll let them talk a little bit more about it. All right guys, here with Corey, tournament director, and Susie, poker host. Yeah. Poker host? Poker host, poker, poker host. player. Poker player, multiple hats. Lots of hats, wearing cool. sideways. I play poker too. <laughs> yeah, that's true. HPCTD on Instagram. Instagram, Check me out. great, great Instagram page. Yeah. Are you on Instagram? I just got on, got into the party at Boom Boom Chip. Boom, boom, chip. Boom, boom, chip. All right, I'll put that like right here. You'll see that. Like, yep. right there. All right, guys, maybe Corey can tell us a little bit about just the festivities here and how the first year after the remodel has been. Definitely amazing. Um, you know, our anniversary, one year in our new building, we just moved over to the new property. Uh, it's it's beautiful. It's the most upscale, it's beautiful. luxurious poker in LA is, is just booming right now. And we want to have everyone come here and check us out. There you go. And we got a lot of uh, exciting things coming around the corner. Brand new properties, $3 billion project. The Rams are going to be here. If I raise this up, you can almost see, you can kind of see like back there is uh, some cranes and uh, the future of the Ram Stadium yeah, just down the street. All right, Definitely. and 510 host, Susie. The games have been amazing. We're getting two to four uncapped 510s every day. We're about to start spreading 1020 every day, 5-5 PLO every day. Um, we've been getting some big games going as is, some quarter 50 PLO, uh, some 1020 uncapped, decent amount of time, but 510 runs all day. We have the straddles going. Big pots, good action here. There you go. I heard it's. I heard you might have been like pulling some people from the home games into the casino environment, and that's like the games that are. Uh, yeah. you know, it's a lot of the different player pool. I think when you have a good property that's well managed with game structures that people enjoy in a game environment, people enjoy in a really brand new, beautiful top section room. It's a natural draw in itself, and that makes my work easier as it is. I wouldn't want to take too much credit from the property. Interesting, cool. All right, well, if you want to get into that action, Hollywood Park Casino, come check them out. As for me, yeah, like I said, just, just gonna go crash. If you look at it in the short term, cashing one out of two tournaments, that's great. It's always easy when you uh, take a very small sample size. I'm sure there'll be more tournaments to play, but it's also time to get back to the cash games. So I smell a uh, proper cash game session coming up on this vlog in the very near future.